For RCR Wireless News, my name is Sean Kinney, and I'm here with Michael Granavis of Ericsson to learn a little bit more about this update to the transport portfolio. So before we dig into it, Michael, tell me a little bit about what needs to change. You know, backhaul, aggregation routers, these have been around for a while. So what's prompted this refresh? No, good point. I mean, essentially what's happening is that as we try to squeeze basically more capacity out of the available spectrum, which is very scarce, we came up with a lot of different uh, radio architectures. So we don't only have the traditional distributed RAN, we have the basement at every cell site. We now also have centralized RAN, we're putting the basement basically in a CRAN hub. We're introducing elastic RAN, uh, we're introducing even virtual RAN. The bottom line is that, and especially with 5G, is that all these different architectures will have different protocols. And different interfaces and all those protocols interfaces essentially also have different requirements regarding capacity and latency. So uh, the bottom line is that the transport network of the past is not going to be the transport network of the future and you don't want to basically use your legacy routers to fulfill the promise of 5G. That, that's I think that's the biggest change we see in the industry now. Okay, so as it relates to the router, help me understand what makes it a 5G router. Is it purely a capacity play or is there more to it? Yeah, no, I mean, very good point. So I think let's first talk about the very obvious ones, right, is capacity imports. Um, if you're increasing, for example, uh, the capacity on the radio side, right, the, the pipe has to get bigger. That means that's essentially that the client interfaces you cannot use one gig ports anymore, right? The client interfaces facing the basements has to be at minimum 10 gig. In fact, the new basement we're introducing, the basement 6648, guess what? It has also a 100 gig uplink interface. So now we're talking about, you know, 100 gigs, 25 gigs, 10 gigs. So as a result of that, um, I think one of the unique things with Ericsson is that our, radio port, uh, our transport portfolio is actually part of our radio portfolio. So we're fully aligned with the latest developments on radio. So what you see over here, this is our router 6675. We have 24 10 gig ports, and then we have 400 gig ports. So we position this as our next generation 5G cell site routers. So the 10 gig ports go to the current basements and 100 gig ports are ready to convert either a four times 25 gig or a single 100 gig. So that is the, 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 the simple one, just capacity, speeds and feet. The second thing is that if you start talking about uh, 5G NR, you're talking about uh, a TDD, so time division duplex, that means that now you really have to coordinate very uh, carefully between different radios, right? When one can transmit, when the other one can transmit. The challenge with that is that I need now uh, time and phase frequency synchronization. The difference is that, for example, with uh, LTE, frequency base, if I lose my GPS, I can basically hang over my, my frequency for a few weeks. Plenty of time, right, for an engineer to go decide to fix it. With NR, if I lose my GPS clock, and typically millimeter wave can be as much as 80 to 90% of the cell site capacity, in an hour, those NR cells can go down. So meaning that for 5G, it's extremely important to start thinking about having a backup over your backhaul network for synchronization. And it's really a tight synchronization. So one of the things we did is that we actually took the synchronization port of the basement and we integrated directly into our cell site routers. The other benefit is basically is the, uh, the cost reduction of the solution. So now instead of connecting a GPS received to every single baseband, I just connect a single one to our routers and then I just distribute it. For example, in a CRN hub with 22 basebands, I'm saving like $17,000, $18,000 over a period of five years. And in the case of a distributed RAN, you're talking about the savings of $500 per site. So both savings, and to protect uh, the capacity. So that's the second one. The third one is that if you look at also the applications, it's not just video, it's gonna be augmented reality, virtual reality, 
to very video-centric new traffic. On top of that, with millimeter wave, you're gonna have short distances, therefore a lot of handovers. Translates into the backhaul network is gonna see big bursts, a lot of bursts. So it means that you need to have also big buffers in your cell site routers to be able to smooth over those bursts, right? So that's the third one. Uh, then the fourth one is that, think about uh, things such as uh, uh, Internet of Things, but then you need to be more secure. And for example, if the combination is that I want ultra low latency, secure, sometimes you don't have the time to go all the way back to a centralized IPsec gateway and then swing back. So we actually have an IPsec gateway integrated in our cell site routers, which allows you to really to do ultra low latency applications. And then the final one is cost. Uh, we understand that you know, 5G is going to be a large investment. So it means that when we build our products, you have to build them extremely efficient. And the efficiency comes in different aspects. On one side is that we have between our radios, this is a baseband, right, and this is the router. Across them, we have aligned uh, the industrial design, simple things, cables, optics, it's all the same. Uh, more importantly, we have done the next step as well, that, for example, the airflow is front to back, but then we have a so-called filterless design. Why is that important? If you have a filter, it means that you know, every three months, you have to go there, check the filter, trick roll 250 bucks, you're talking about $1,000 savings per year. Big carrier, 80,000 cell sites, it starts adding up, right? So that is one thing. Um, then we're also doing uh, so-called integration across both the radio and the transport domain. So that our goal is that the only thing you have to do is you connect the hardware, you connect the fibers, you connect the power, it will turn up automatically. On top of that, it will auto-provision between the different domains. So this gives you kind of you know, an idea right, of what, what the main difference is. Michael, I really appreciate you taking the time to dig Thanks. into the specifics of your router and front hall upgrades. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you.